Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thank you for being here today. Uh, the conversation I wanna to have today is for all you women out there who are living alone. Now we did a kind of an informal uh, survey a few weeks ago and turned out that quite a few women in our 60 and Me community live by themselves, um, either by choice, uh, divorce, maybe they've lost their partner, but they're now living alone. And I would say the majority of comments that we had said that they were loving it. You know, that they were really truly enjoying uh, just having their own space. And I've done a previous video on this about you know the, the kinds of things you can enjoy living alone independence you know freedom to do what you want to do kinds of things that you always have had you know passion for and also things that you, you know can move away from that you don't have to do so there's you know, multiple sides to it but the fact of the matter is <laughs> there's a lot of women in our community who are by themselves living alone and I want to talk about how to live a luxurious lifestyle, how to live like a millionaire, you know, when you're living in your own space, whether it's a one studio, bedroom studio or a one room studio or a bedroom, one bedroom or three or whatever you're li living in, you know, to make the most of it. And I've got some good ideas. I think there's about 20 of them in this um, conversation, but I'm sure that you'll come up with more. And I would love to love to hear your your stories. I mean, what you've done, what you do on a day to day basis to just make yourself feel special and your know, home feel comfortable and yours, your own space. So the first thing, and I don't need to remind you this because we talk about it all the time, and that's self care. You know, make sure that you are doing things to pamper yourself. It doesn't cost a lot to, to buy, um, you know, a, a mask or some, uh, you know, cosmetics or, you know. I mean, we've discovered, I think, through the, you know, the many, many uh, trials and tribulations that stuff in the drugstore is just as good as the high-end products. I mean, for example, I have this uh, product called Assemblies. It's quite expensive if you buy it as a face cream, but if you buy it as a body cream, body lotion, it's just the same. And, and it's like, you know, a, a third of the price, less than a third. So that's the type of thing that I always look for, are those little bargains that, um, you know, luxury products, but, at a, a, you know, at a bargain price. So, um, you know, bubble baths, uh, those great little things you can put in the shower that just exude an odor and a scent and, you know, a beautiful, um, you know, sort of Hawaiian feel when you're, you know, in the shower. Um, all kinds of beautiful products, but pamper yourself. You know, you've got yourself in your room and you maybe you're feeling, you know, eh, what, what am I gonna do today? Just put on a face mask. You can even make one uh, in, with ingredients in your kitchen. But anyway, self-care, really, really important. Bubble baths, I could go on forever. But you know, things that make you feel good. The second thing is kind of related to that. And, and it's having a personal space in your home or your room or wherever you're living that is sacred to you. You know, it could be a cozy little reading nook where you go to read your, your books or listen to an audio book or whatever. Or it could just be, um, you know, part of a room. Like for me, I have a tiny space, which I have a little altar and it's not religious necessarily. I've got a couple of things that are important to me, things that are symbolic, things that make me feel like, you know, anyone at any, uh, you know, level of wealth, any, any level of, you know, sort of aloneness could enjoy and I think that's the secret here is living like a millionaire doesn't mean being surrounded by expensive things. It means just, you know, having chosen the things that are special to you and make you feel sacred and, and, and you know, sort of comfortable and, and treasured. So I would say have a sacred space, um, you know, whether it's a, a religious space, which it could be for you, or a, a space where you can just be quiet, put a little light on, have a little table, cup of tea, just whatever makes you feel that you've created a space in the house that's yours, that you love, or in the room. Just you know, make it special. The third thing is to dress for success. No definition of that anymore. I mean, it's just dressing comfortably. I mean, I've actually gotten into the habit of wearing dresses now. I used to wear, you know, in the, in the winter months, you know, long pants and you know, cargo pants, and I still will wear those and I still enjoy them. But I kind of like dresses. They make you feel kind of slinky and, you know, comfortable and relaxed. And whatever your idea of a relaxed and, and comfortable um, uh, wardrobe is, that's what I would encourage you to focus on. You don't need a ton of things. We don't need tons of clothes. We just need things that make us feel you know, special. And when you say dress for success, it's just the success of reaching that point in your life where it doesn't matter what you wear anymore. No one's judging. And, and even if they are, it's not significant to you anymore. <laughs> just wear what you like. Another thing is to host a themed party. Now, 
a lot of women who live alone like living alone. They don't want to have people over or visiting or they don't even need that kind of company. I mean, once they come in, you know, the afternoon or the evening into their room or where they've been all day, um, you know, they don't need any um, reinforcement. But if you every now and again do a themed party, you know, even if it's just like, you know, wear something, you know, that's, that reminds you of summer or uh, wear a hat or, you know, just something that's, uh, it could be themed to the season. Uh, it could be like just a little, little bring uh, potluck, you know, bring, bring uh, your recipe, favorite recipe and just, uh, or maybe a theme of a country. Like I used to do Indian um, uh, meals, you know, and just invite people and play Indian music. You could even wear saris, you know, just play play with food. <laughs> That's another thing. Okay, new hobby or passion. This is an obvious one. But you know, don't hesitate. I mean, you can get so many things now at libraries and um, out in the world that can help you to learn a new skill. If it's a new language or a new, um, it's a new concept or even starting a new a blog, you know, doing some videos, uh, take up photography, whatever you love. And again, this gets back to this living like a millionaire. A millionaire might be able to afford, you know, a great Nikon or, or Sony or whatever camera. I've got a cell phone. I love it. I do all my videos on my, on my cell phone, on my iPhone, I should say. That probably ages me to call it a cell phone, but anywho, um, you know, just, you know, you don't, you don't need expensive things to create beautiful, um, you know, pro products or, or beautiful um, outcomes. You can just make, you know, make do. I actually have coloring pencils that cost nothing. I mean, they were just in a kid's section somewhere, but I have coloring books and I do really things that bring me joy. I love, I love color. I love rainbow colors. I love, uh, you know, I just love um, the artistic expression. So that's another thing. Um, oh yes, uh, plan dream vacations. So this is something that if you live alone, you may also be a person that likes to travel alone. But on the other hand, um, I think as you get a little older, it's kind of fun to use travel as a way to make new friends. You know, there's so many things you can do. Um, you don't have to go, you know, miles and miles away or international travel. It can just be a local thing. You go to the museum, meet at, meet at a park and have a picnic. Um, you know, plan a, tri a trip to the next town over and you're gonna spend a couple of nights or, or just somewhere that you can find another person that has that same interest. Um, one idea that was put out there was a create signature uh, drink, signature anything. I mean, if you have a signature necklace that you always wear or a signature um, recipe, you know, just have a little party. I mean, t tell people to come on over and enjoy your salted caramel cheesecake or whatever it is. And just an hour, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be an elaborate, you know, stressful thing. Just do something that's, you know, your own personal taste. Um, what, host a movie night. That's always fun. And you know something, this is really interesting. A friend of mine, I mentioned that after COVID, it was really hard to get out and do things in the real world. And they actually have uh, not video or video nights or movie nights remotely. They just agree with like two or three other people that they're all gonna watch this movie together. They're gonna stop after a certain period of time and have a chat and discuss it. But you don't have to have people in your home if you're preciously protective of that. And some people are. Some people just like living by themselves. I'm actually one of them. But the idea of having a movie night together with, with some friends, and I've always thought about doing this with 60 and me actually, have a movie night one night where we all sit down and just you know do a live show and just sit down and watch a movie and chat. But anyway, that's another thing you can do. Um, spa day at home is another thing, of course. You know, invite someone to come over and just do a spa thing, you know, afternoon together or evening or weekend. Um, you know, but just maybe treat yourself to a little extra special cream or, or, you know, product that you can just, you know, luxuriate. Um, what else have I got here? Oh yes, <laughs> indulgent in fine chocolate. Um, and it's not just chocolate, but it's just like something that you totally, totally love. And you're going to do it just once, you know, you're just going to have a, a little treat to yourself and you're going to make it special. Put on the dress, you know, do your hair, make yourself feel like you're going out, have a nice meal and then get your chocolates out. Okay, they cost a dollar each. They were really expensive and they're really nice, but just treat yourself, just the most important thing. Another thing you can do is start um, you know, collecting. Now, I'm not saying that you need to go out and start collecting stuff, you know, like, uh, we're all, we're all in for downsizing, <laughs> to be honest, but you know, we want to keep it minimal, but precious. So things that you want to collect, like for example, I love crystals and um, kaleidoscopes. I'm, I'm a, I mean, I honestly would collect kaleidoscopes if I could afford them because they, they're so, so beautiful. And there's some really, really gorgeous ones, but crystals, I have a little bowl 
it's actually in the area I was telling you about my little space um, area and I've got a bowl where I just collect crystals and and sometimes they're very tiny sometimes they're like a heart shape or something that you might hang up to get reflections in your room really really cool um, live personal library um, start collecting books that you really treasure maybe ones that you don't want to put on Kindle or, or you know read online you want something that's you know a book collection that's like your top 20 books just buy them one at a time. You can probably get them you know, at really good prices now um, because people are doing more things online with books. But, but a book collection is another thing, uh, a personal library. Take up a new fitness regime. Now that could be something really simple like um, just turning on Leslie Sansom on uh, YouTube who does uh, you know, walk a mile with me. Could be just doing some yoga. And we have 60 and Me has got yoga for gent a gentle yoga for seniors in our YouTube um, uh, family. You can just go to the YouTube and type in yoga. Kat uh, Kabira is the teacher. We used to sell these like 10 years ago, but now they're all on YouTube free of charge. And um, you know, yoga is a great one and Pilates is another one. Again, you know, I've got, I could go through this list, but read, read the, the rest of the um, article. I, I'll, I'll send you a link to it, but it's basically, you know, do things, explore new things, enjoy new things. And you know, treat yourself now and again go to, the, to a museum go to an art gallery um oh there's one more thing that i'll mention because i just caught a glimpse of it on my eye i think this is number 20. <laughs> buy flowers one flower doesn't matter if you can't afford a big bunch of flowers just go out and buy one flower put it in a, in a little glass if you haven't got any you know, little vases that are small enough just put it in a glass you will honestly will be amazed how that can make you feel so those are like 20 or maybe 15 I got to ideas for living alone. If you if you enjoy that lifestyle, you can still live luxuriously. You can still live like a millionaire. They, flowers cost the same for them as for you. One flower or 10 flowers, it's a flower. You know, I really do believe in these things that the simplest things can make all the difference in your life. So have a fabulous day, everybody. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel here if you haven't done that already. Come join our Patreon group if you want a little bit more of a uh, personalized, intimate relationship with other sisters here on 60 and Me. And just know that I am so grateful for you. I love, I love you. I, I really appreciate you in my life. And you know, I'm, I'm a solo liver as well. So I'm on the same trip as you. If you've got any cool ideas, share them with us, please. How do you enjoy living by yourself, living alone? Take good care, everybody. Lots and lots of love. Bye-bye for now.